Hello, and welcome back once again to Belmont Bunch. Today, we're discussing the first round, a little bit of an autopsy of both the qualifying and round robin. And yeah, that's what we got. Let's get right into it. <laughs> All right, we're going to open with the round robin, uh, the round robin, which I have uh, fewer things to say uh, about. So let's talk about how both four seeds became the one seeds and vice versa. Um, very interesting. I had Colorado finishing first in the West. Uh, they were a goal away from doing so. And I had Boston finishing first in the East. Uh, a lot of this was taking into account numbers. Um, the numbers are less relevant now after you've actually gotten to see them play. They were more relevant because they were the only predicting factor uh, when you haven't played hockey for three or four months. And now we have a general outline of what we can look forward to based on actual play from recent times. And um, Vegas is everything looks to be everything I thought they could be coming into the season. They were my Stanley Cup champions uh, in my in my preseason prediction I had them in the caps in the final and this time Vegas prevailing and um I lost uh, I didn't lose total faith but uh they're just having such an okay year um but big way to come back in the tournament and uh, go three and oh and Colorado who finished a second uh also looked very dynamic I'm not worried about them at all they were one goal in overtime away from the one seed they look fine Dallas and St. Louis are interesting. They played each other the other day for the right to uh, be the three seed. And Dallas wins in a shootout, a postseason shootout. Oh, God. Um, and neither team looks like it really got it going. But at least St. Louis, you know, can point to we just had a, a couple of real close losses in this round, Robin. So I actually think St. Louis is fine. Uh, so we'll talk about that when I predict the second or the first round, this being the qualifying round. Um, so yeah, that's basically it, uh, in the West In the East Philly hottest team in the league, them in Minnesota, uh, going into the break and also the uh, Rangers to an extent and, uh, Philly takes care of business. Uh, I know in the prediction video, I had them finishing exactly in order. You know what? That was dumb. You know why? Because hockey's crazy. And I didn't account for the craziness of hockey because probably it's holding on to my numbers and clap my, 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 uh, jeweled numbers. Anyway. Tampa Bay still finished a second, Washington third. I had that right. Just had to flip, and I would have been fine. Boston I am worried about um, because they they looked stagnant, and I think it's because they had guys that were unfit to play for a while, and so it looked like they were behind in uh, getting their team structure back together. And, um, yeah, it showed offensively because they didn't get much out of the perfection line. And uh, for as for Washington, they looked okay. Uh, they beat Boston. Outside of that, they, you know, point against Tampa. Uh, Philly handled them. Philly handled everybody pretty well. Philly looks fantastic. Uh, and Tampa Bay trying to avoid, um, you know, uh, uh, another collapse. They will be playing Columbus once again. That'll be very fun TV. Uh, and yeah, I, I just say uh, Washington, uh, Boston, I'm worried about. I'm not as worried about St. Louis. Uh, that was my pick uh, after my first round when I talked about uh, my first round of predictions before we knew what the format would be or what we thought it would be, and then it ended up being different. But I had St. Louis and Boston rematching in the final with Boston winning. Yeah, that doesn't look too good right now. My preseason prediction's looking better. But uh, with that being said, let's jump to the qualifying round, and I'm going to grab my little notebook because I took notes on all of these series, and I actually got to watch a decent amount of each of these series, uh, series is, um, so yeah, I've starred each of my, uh, pre round predictions. So you can keep an eye on how I did, but as we hit the 420 mark, I'm going to go check my notebook. All right. So let's talk about qualifying round. Start with the eight and nine in the West, uh, Winnipeg and Calgary. Um, I picked Winnipeg. Uh, I, 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 bleh, uh, I felt that they had, uh, gone through a lot uh, with, you know, losing Bufflin, losing, uh, well, give, you know, trading Truba, uh, and that their defensive core, I, I don't think I took into account how um, the depth all the way around. Because after Shifley went out and Lane went out, 
they they were in trouble and he kind of knew um that it was going to be a long shot showed a lot of heart that's one of my notes it showed a lot of heart winning that game right after um the the incident that knocked Shifley out and also uh Lina going out so lots of credit there um I don't think that play was on purpose by the way by Kachuk and if it wasn't Kachuk I don't think we'd be close to talking about it my cat is right down here but you can't see um I, I depth issues uh down the middle uh, after you lost Shifley uh, since there was no little they really didn't have much going down the middle uh and, and I I'm, I was impressed that they got the one win after losing those two uh, but Connor and Ellers uh, look pretty decent, so that's great. A little bit of maturity added, a little bit of experience added. Uh, and their special teams were not great. They they were not great. The power play where the PK str both struggled. 11.8% uh, on the power play, 70.6% on the PK. Uh, as their counterparts were great on the special teams, as you can tell by the bad Winnipeg numbers. Calgary uh, really looked good. Uh, they're one of those teams that's weird. It's almost like they can't play, uh, like play as the favorites, but as the underdogs, they're, they look pretty good. Um, so we'll see what that means for round two. I just have them down as great special teams. Uh, I don't really have anything really bad for Calgary in round one. So good for them. Uh, seven V 10. Uh, oh, by the way, and I got the Calgary one wrong, as you can see by the big X Vancouver. I got right. As you can see by the big check, Vancouver, solid special teams. They showed maturity after losing game one. It would have been easy with a lot of young guys on that team to kind of, I don't know, be not fold. That's a little early game one, but, but, you know, get in, get into a, a bad mental state, uh, going into game two, but they, they handled their business the rest of the way. The only downside I had was Markstrom was a little bit shaky for a guy that looks borderline elite. So, uh, keep an eye on Markstrom against St. Louis in round two. Uh, and by the way, Calgary versus Dallas. In the other series, Minnesota Fiala continued his uh, his strong play. Uh, I thought Staylock was decent. Um, their special teams were kind of mediocre. Unfortunately, it, it, you know they were they went into the break hot. This kind of felt like a step back a little bit, um, where you know uh, they they have a lot of vets and it, it's it's tough. They have a lot of pro uh, pros good prospects coming in. They'll have. Uh, Kaprizov, or how you pronounce his name, uh, next year. Uh, Goaltending, you know, Stalock and Dubnik. Uh, I think they'd like to find more stable goaltending. Uh, but Stalock did all right in this series. Uh, but yeah, Vancouver uh, advanced, as I predicted. Uh, none of these series went five, also. Nashville, Arizona. I got this one right. I'm so excited. Arizona's first playoff postseason, we'll call it, to be safe. Victory since 2012. In a series, Nashville, tons of chances. So it's not like they didn't exhaust all their options. Tons of shots. They had good special teams, too. Their power play was clicking. Their penalty kill was, was decent, from what I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. 26.6 uh, on the power play, 83.4 on the penalty kill. Pretty good special teams. Arizona's special teams were not even good. Uh, we'll get to that, though. Uh, Short-handed goals against uh, were an issue. Michael Grabner, hello. Uh, they allowed too many goals... Uh, to a kind of weak offensive team. But uh, I guess you could say Arizona was also a bit of a dormant offense because they have so much talent with Kessel, Hall, Keller, uh, hopefully Schmaltz, a little bit of step on still. Uh, so there's stuff there. Um, but, you know, it hadn't really uh, shown this season since their goals for was 2.71. It was pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, uh, in this series, they averaged three and a half goals a game, Arizona. Um, Nashville... I, I don't know where you go. Uh, you really have to hope for Lafreniere. I'm, that's kind of like my number one uh, destination for him is Nashville at the moment, probably because I have a lot of rivals <laughs> up for uh, the first overall pick being an Islander fan. But uh, yeah, um, it's tough because uh, we'll talk about Arizona now. Timely goals and great goaltending really saw them through. Special teams weren't great and they gave up a ton of chances. So, you know, I feel like this could have gone either way. And it just went to... And, I, and we'll, you know, it's hard to say if Rene would have made a different, uh, a difference, but um, I didn't think Saros was bad. There were some really weird goals, some really wonky goals in that series. Uh, let's go Edmonton, Chicago. Edmonton, the Stars showed up. I mean, really disappointing ending, but the Stars were there. Uh, Connor McDavid was fantastic. 
Uh, Leon Dreisaitl pitched in with goals. Uh, so those two guys were there. The offense was there as a whole. They averaged 3.75 goals per game in the series. It's the defense. And I, I hate it because I felt like it was a, one of those things uh, they're known for is struggling defensively. Um, and I felt like that was unfair to them this year because their goals against was a little bit high, but their special teams were so good in the regular season. And they were, I mean, their power play was still pretty great in the playoffs. PK was bad. It dropped off from 84.4 to 77.8. And that's, you know, a talented Chicago offense. But um, goaltending, goaltending for Edmonton. Oof. Sign Leonard in the offseason? Question mark? Uh, yeah, goaltending was and struggled defensively uh, and with the PK. Uh, Chicago, Taves. Welcome back, bud. Uh, he was kind of vintage. And he and they did it without like a ton of Kane influence. So look out. That means if Kane, you know, wakes wakes up a little bit more, they could be a scary team. They still I mean they are already. Uh bad penalty kill for Chicago, 70.6. Uh, and they were still suspect defensively, like I said, 3.75 goals per game allowed, but they scored four per, uh, per game. So that's the West. Let's talk about the East. Uh, Toronto and Columbus. Whew. Man, I am an Islander fan. I hate Toronto. I still feel bad. Yes. Yes, they exist. The meme. Um, man, uh, you know, this was my most excited for series. Uh, that and Carolina and New York, uh, the Rangers. And, um, I mean, this one doesn't, didn't disappoint. Um, for Toronto... The goals per game in the regular season were fantastic, as you would expect. They averaged two goals per game in this series. Oof. And um, Columbus averaged 3.2. Uh, you know, that's interesting, though, because, you know, the averages look a lot higher, but these games were close. I guess, um, you know, Columbus shutting them out twice is a big part of that. Uh, and empty netters, you know, buoy the goal average for sure. Uh, Toronto, the effort, I thought the effort was great, you know, um, the bottom six kind of failed them, and the top six did pretty well, I know Tavares hit that post, Tavares was probably their best player last night, um, if that being game five, depending on when this comes out, um, their special teams were pretty decent, uh, they didn't allow a power play goal, um, yeah, the power play was a little bit low, 15%, but... I mean, ugh, this was such a tight checking series. Expensive offense held in check. Um, that's a little bit unfair to the top six because the top six played pretty well. Austin Matthews uh, deserves none of the blame for this. Uh, he played pretty well, and I thought he showed up. Um, Columbus. Oh, also for Toronto, Freddie. Just, and it, it, like he plays well, and then he just worst times to give up really clunky goals. Uh, Columbus, they gr grinded it out. Uh, extremely impressive goaltending and defense. Uh, and they have a swarming forecheck. And they have basically a very similar similar um, you know, process to the Islanders. And uh, it works really well. Uh, and also, I think the coaching I didn't take into enough account. Sheldon Keefe did okay uh, as a rookie coach. Columbus torts, just more experience, ton of experience. Um, so that was a big part of it. Uh, worries for Columbus going forward, depending too much on their goaltending a little bit. Um, can they hold together? They did last night, but not every team is Toronto. Toronto was like forever snake bitten. Um, and we'll see in round two. I mean, Tampa, <laughs> Tampa kind of is too, but, um, yeah, I'll leave that for my prediction. Um, but yeah, um, even... Yeah, can they hold together even while being outplayed? Because Toronto did have portions of the series where they looked fantastic, and Columbus was on their back foot, and it, the goaltending just got them through, and a couple of posts here and there. Long Island. I wanted to differentiate the New York teams. The Islanders take that series in four. I got that right to the game, so that makes me feel good because it makes me feel like I know my own team pretty well. Uh, the Islanders' power play awakens. Anthony Beauvillier was fantastic in this series. Defensive structure. Oh, it was wonderful to see you again, defensive structure. I missed you so much. Adam Pelich's return. Casey Sezikis, Cal Clarebuck to an extent. Um, good forechecking from the fourth line. Good defensive structure overall. And except for one area, that is penalty killing. That is the one negative I have for the Islanders, because they should have swept this series. 
uh, the mental errors, uncharacteristic mental errors in uh, game three. And penalty kill was bad. It was big bad. Islanders at 71% penalty kill. Uh, 25% power play, so good for that. Average 3.25 goals per game. Uh, they don't really get a lot of empty netters, so that's not real. That's kind of just what they were, and that's great to see because if they can score and defend at the clip of 175 goals per game, they're looking pretty good. Um, so, yeah, Florida. Power play is fantastic. Mike Hoffman's really good, and I really hope we steal him from you in the offseason. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, everybody's in a cap crunch. We'll see. Um, you know, lack of... I, I thought Florida actually showed a lack of effort, and I don't say that very often. Um, that That is reserved for teams that I really feel like didn't want to show up, and I felt like after game one, Florida was not very interested in the series. They only win game three by some very big mental errors by the Islanders. And, yeah, I mean, Bob was, eh? He was good for points, kind of like Freddie. Good a lot, just the, ba the, the, the few bad goals were just really obviously bad. I'm looking at the Beauvillier goal in Game five, uh, 4. Uh, Carolina, in their sweep, it's a brass bonanza. Suffocating defense. Swarming four check. Good goaltending. The good goaltending one was the biggest question mark, and Peter Morazic did pretty well. Uh, the defense probably has something to do with that too, but their defense was missing Dougie Hamilton and Pesci. So very impressive stuff. Uh, Rob Brindamore, one of the most exciting young coaches in the league. Uh, stay out of the box is basically Carolina's thing. They had a lot of penalties, uh, more so in game one. Uh, and that's basically it. But their PK was great. It was at 92.9%. Um, so, you know, they steamrolled. They were fantastic. I'm going to itch my eye. Um, yeah, great stuff from Carolina, and, uh, I might have them going pretty far. NYC is what I had for the Rangers, differentiating. Uh, Hank and Igor, they were pretty good. Uh, Hank, maybe a couple of, a couple of softies, but overall, kept them in games. Um, that's pretty much all I had for positives. They only averaged, with, with their talent, talented offense that averaged 3.33 goals per game in the season, dropped that first three to a one, and he got the one three three they averaged in the playoffs while allowing three point six six per game. Power play was non-existent. The one goal, a seven point one percent, was a five on three goal, and it was Panarin. So Panarin's only goal was on a five on three. Uh, their penalty kill was good though, so I'll give them that. Um, yeah, uh, one goal from Panarin. They were outworked. Uh, maybe you know because Carolina's a little bit more experienced. I think maybe that's a little bit more of what it is less than outworked. It's just Carolina knows what it takes, and the Rangers are a young team that's figuring out what it takes. All right, Pittsburgh. Uh, the defense was was decent, you know. Uh, there's not a lot of great stuff to say about Pittsburgh in that series. Um, you know, they had top-end talent not really do much. Crosby got a goal in game one, was kind of invisible thereafter. Uh, Malkin self-admittedly, you know, kind of, struggled and the goaltending was just fine it was just a lot of mediocrity and you know montreal uh great structure and carry price those are the two things uh and oh uh, you know jeff petrie jeff petrie i didn't write that down but jeff petrie was great great offensive defenseman it's been underrated for a decent bit here uh and montreal the only negative i have is losing lafreniere uh so good for you guys montreal i mean except for that area but uh good for you guys in this series victory uh that closes the book on the qualifying round and round robin. And uh, next time, uh, which is hopefully very soon, I'm going to have my round two picks. So I go three for eight in the qualifying round. Uh, at one point, it was looking way worse than that uh, early on in each of the series. Um, but you know what? I'll take it. It's my first time putting predictions on the internet for everyone to see. Um, I'm going to be putting out a bracket, uh, on a bracket challenge. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah. So let me know what you think. If you're a fan of one of these teams, tell me how, um, if you thought, uh, if you thought that my, uh, analysis was fair and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time and, um, enjoy the draft lottery tonight.